right. So, uh, in this video, uh, we're going to learn how to implement the contrast adjustment IP core in Viva HLS. Last one, we learned how to do the histogram alone. And today, I'm going to show a little bit how this algorithm works. I'm going to show some stuff in MATLAB as well. And uh, then we jump to the Vivaldo HLS and write the, our algorithm, okay? Uh, this video will not, uh, this lesson is actually not going to stop now. There is a third video that I will show how to merge all these IP cores into the Z board. And uh, I also put a timer and you guys can compare uh, how fast it become uh, doing the same algorithm, this image processing algorithm in software or in hardware, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed, uh, thumbs up if you like the video. Okay, guys. So, histogram stretch. This is one of the, uh, one of the algorithms. Okay, there are plenty of them. That is basically improve the contrast of your image. Okay. Uh, before we jump to the formula, let's see this as a as a block. Okay. The histogram stretch algorithm has as inputs an x of t, which are the pixels that are arriving on the on the image in the stream of the image and uh, y of t, which are the contrasted pixels on the image, okay? The parameters of these guys are x-min and x-max, which mean the minimum value in the input image and the maximum value of the, of the input image as well, okay? So, let's jump to the formula. The formula is quite simple. It's just saying that the, the output pixel is the input pixel minus the minimum value of the image, divided by the maximum value of the image minus the minimum value of the, the image, you can say average, okay? Multiplied by the maximum possible value that this image can get. In the case of the grayscale, it's simply 255, okay? Uh, basically, the idea is, uh, as we told before, if, if, your, if the histogram of your image is really not spread, uh, spread in all the possible values that your image can have, you have a bad contrast. And this algorithm will simply transform this histogram in this year. It's basically going to linearly stretch your, uh, your histogram, okay? Uh, let's jump to Vivaldo HLS and uh, probably I, I lose a little bit of time as well on how, the, in my lab probably, on how this visually change the effect of your image, okay? Hi guys, before we start uh, in Vivaldo HLS, uh, we just start a little bit talking about the stretching histogram algorithm, okay? Uh, let's open just an image here, okay? And uh, let's display this image. And uh, okay, so this is this famous picture of Lena, okay? And uh, if you take a look in the histogram of this image, you can verify that the the histogram is quite uh, compressed okay in just a part of the all possible values that you can have in this image okay so uh, if you see here we have pixels from uh, from pixel value 50 up to 100 something maybe 120 or something like this okay the idea is that by stretching the histogram we're going to sparse all these pixels okay in all the possible values that you can have in the grayscale image okay uh, if we just execute this function here that we that I created previously, you can notice the difference. Okay? So let me open the other image. Let me now open the histogram here. So you guys can observe that now the histogram is like spread in all possible values, okay? And the contours is better okay again the algorithm i show in the board but let's have a look again it's quite simple okay for every element uh, for every pixel that comes in okay we do this calculation here okay and uh here we calc we get the minimum value and the maximum value but by but uh, as previously we created uh, an ip core who calculate the histogram this will be much much faster because we don't need to iterate in the in the whole image to get the mean and the max value okay so let me stop now and jump to vivado hls and uh, let's write this code in c and convert it to uh, to verilog or vhdl so guys this is the 
Oh, I have already uh, a Vivaldo HLS project open, okay? And let's analyze it, and I will explain you line by line, okay? This part here <coughs> is just to to include the AP axis U or axis S data type. This is oh sorry, this guy here is going to define the class HLS stream, okay? And this include here is actually going to uh, to give us this uh, this AP axis axi u or axi s that is used to define uh, axi stream side, side channel basically we are interested in the t last signal because it's useful for the dma to know that the, the uh, that our ip core has finished the stream or the input has finished sending this stream as well okay and our top function will be just this uh, do histogram stretch that has uh, a stream an input stream an output stream okay and two parameters for the mean and max value on the image okay if we jump here to the code it's quite simple is uh, here we just define that the input and output are axis stream we here we ask Vivado HLS to, syn to synthesize uh, an axis light port called control bus where you can start and stop our IP core and actually check if the IP core has finished the the processing or not, and here we have the mean and max uh, parameters here that participate that uh, that uh, come along with the same axial light interface. Okay, uh, if we don't use this, basically going to create more two ports, and uh, and we don't want that. Okay, here uh, we just uh, cache. The, and we calculate and cache the result of x max and x mean because actually we don't want to uh, to recalculate this all the time. We just want to calculate it once and use in our expression. Okay. Uh, this guy here, as I explained before, is basically instruction Vivado HLS to pipeline this for loop. So basically, before the before this iteration completely finish you start doing the other one so basically you you're going to uh to make your latency smaller okay uh we're going to synthesize to synthesize with and without this and you notice the difference okay so here we just read the stream basically you can understand that this will block if the if the fifth if the dma or any sender f uh, is empty okay uh, here we just get the data from the stream and here we calculate one thing that you could notice is that we are defining this value here as float and we are forcing this calculation to be done in float and then we convert to unsigned char that are 8 bits because basically this division here if we treat as 8 bit unsigned could lead to zero and then the calculation will simply be wrong okay this part here we just uh, we just populate our our stream output with the signal sticky strobe user and the last uh, now we are not retaining the stream so basically we can just copy the from the input those values okay and uh, here we just output the value uh, on the stream again in this signal here out stream okay let's uh, synthesize this is always difficult for me to to speak uh, okay I'm going to stop because it can take some time and uh, just to show we're going to see the effect or turning this guy on or off okay so the process is done uh, here in the utilization estimate we can see how many resource compare to the FPJ that we choose in this case the zinc used in the Z board okay these are the are, are the interfaces okay basically we have an axis light interface and two axis stream interfaces but here is where I would like you guys to have attention so uh, take a look on, on this latency here basically is uh, as our image is 320 by 240 this is basically for every pixel we're going to have an output okay but if I comment this line here 
and uh, synthesize, synthesize again, you're going to see that the latency will be way, way bigger. So uh, here, look how the latency got way, way bigger. Okay, actually, probably uh, three times or something like this. Okay, so uh, let's bring back the pipeline. Okay, synthesize again. And uh, while he's doing this, let's talk a little bit about the test bench. Okay, uh, let me do maximize. Um, as the previous example that we did for the histogram, we are going to use OpenCV at this point just to open and uh, and close the uh, and save the image. Sorry, but uh, Vivaldo HLS also support OpenCV. Okay, and uh, and I will talk about it as well. Okay, so uh, here we just define an input image and an output image. Okay, by the way, it matches with the. Uh, let me just close those. It matches with the with the path that I have here in MATLAB. By the way, I'm going to the source code of all the playlists is going to be available as soon as I finish the the training. Okay, so uh, what we do basically we read the image, we convert it to grayscale. Okay, we define here the stream for input and output for our uh, for our function. Okay, and uh, here we just declare uh, um, uh, OpenCV ma matrix, okay, that points out for uh, for an array that uh, oh sorry it finished now the synthesizer let me close it that points out for an array that is actually going to be used to store our image, okay, and here we populate the the input stream with the data of the input image. By the way, let us open again this image here. Okay. Uh, we call our function. We know already that the that the mean value and the max value are those. We simply come here in MATLAB and put, put like max max image mean mean image. Okay. So those values here come from here. Okay. And here we just after we execute our function, we just take out the uh, the values from the uh, from the output stream, populate this array that uh, that is is being pointed by an OpenCV matrix, and we save the image. Here the the code to save the image. Okay, so uh, let's execute it. We run simulation. We don't want now the uh, to launch the debugger. Okay, and we compare. After this is done, we compare with. Uh, we open in MATLAB the result and see if it's what we expect. By the way, this will be the the output file. So now the simulation is done. Uh, basically, now we have here in MATLAB. Yes, it's here. The, sorry, the Lena with contrast. Okay, so let's open this image. Em read. BMP. Um, the output of this we send to EM2. Cool guys. So, at least in terms of simulation in C code, it works. Okay, let's come now to Vivaldi HLS and let's run, let's do a co-simulation, which means we're going to get, we're going to simulate the result that we have with this code in Verilog. We're going to use uh, an HDL simulator that could be model sim or Vivado actually ships with a simulator as well. And let's see if this if the result matches okay so let me just delete uh okay let me delete this file here no basically let's not delete it let's rename it to c sim okay let's jump back to vivado and let's do a co simulation okay so we are going to use the vivado simulator and we're going basically to simulate the generated HDL code and see if matches with the C generated code, not C generated code, just C compiled code. Okay, so 
I'll pause the video because this take like five minutes or something like this. By the way, uh, high resolution images could take up to one day. Okay, sometimes at uh, at work when I when I put like a lot of images to simulate, this can really be long. Okay, so let me pause the video and I come back when it's done. So it finished. Uh, it now, uh, as I explained, we simulate the HTL generated code. Okay, so let's go to MATLAB again, and uh, now we have it. This result. Let's open image again. This seems okay. So, but most important, let's do something. Let's image cscene and let's open the the image simulated in C and let's use open the image simulated in HDL and let's see if there are differences okay let's try for instance what happens if we subtract them maybe as those guys are unsigned let's force them to be like single okay okay it seems that there are no difference but let's check yeah they basically match it perfectly okay so we basically nail it huh? so the simulation in C and the simulation in HDL they match it completely so uh, at this point so if your HDL code really matches to what you want you can come here and export this to the IP catalog okay and in the next video what I'm going to do I'm going to mix this uh, the histogram stretch with the histogram block that we created in the previous video I'm going to create a program that basically we will do this the the same thing that we did here in MATLAB probably I, I put the image on the um, on the source code because we don't have a camera or a input video now in the Z board and uh, basically we're going to to calculate all this and also compare uh, in this image how fast or how uh, or slow who knows Th this is compared to the same thing working in purely software okay guys so i uh, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, see you guys in the next video